Now, I've had people say, well, Susanna, you could have missed. Okay, yeah, maybe. You know, it's certainly possible. I said, well, your gun could have jammed. Well, it's a revolver. So again, not very likely. But one thing that absolutely nobody can argue with, it sure as hell would have changed the odds, wouldn't it? It would have changed the odds. There was absolutely nothing that kept this guy from going in and doing what he did. Now, a lot of people think guns are the problem. And I know a lot of you here understand that. They think guns are the problem. But let's talk about that for just a minute. Let's, let's think about this for just a minute. Well, we had this dreadful shooting at the Luby's Cafeteria in Texas that I just told you about. Oh, wait a minute. That couldn't have happened because guns weren't allowed there. Well, then there was some mass shooting at a post office. Y'all remember that? Oh, wait. Um, Bill, I'm pretty sure guns aren't allowed in post offices. Uh, oh, Columbine. Columbine High School. Oh, wait a minute. Columbine High School, Pearl, Mississippi, Springfield, Oregon, and a handful of other schools. Well, that couldn't have happened because guns aren't allowed there. There was a shooting at a, uh, at a, at a printing factory, a, a print place in Honolulu, Hawaii. Well, that couldn't have happened there because I saw a sign on the front door that was the circle with the gun with the slash through it. So I don't know how that could have happened. And of course, Virginia Tech, guns weren't allowed there. So how did that happen? If guns are the problem, somebody explain to me why we haven't seen mass shootings at NRA conventions. <laughs> <laughs> or skeet and trap shoot. Or, at least in my state, the dreaded gun show. Places where there are thousands of guns in the hands of at least as many honest, law-abiding citizens. If guns are the problem, somebody explain that to me. In fact, I don't think you can name me one single place, and if you can, please let me know, because I honestly am looking for it. Name me one single place where a mass shooting has occurred in this country where guns were allowed. Anybody? Even at Fort Hood, the MPs no. had to take it. Yeah. Fort Hood! <laughs> Fort Hood, excellent example. It happens to be right down the road from me. One of my dearest friends was the emergency room doctor that day. A guy that I sat next to on the plane, on the first plane that I took today, his, his wife it was a nurse that day that actually performed CPR on somebody that day. Our guys that are sent overseas, and women, I use that collectively, they're sent overseas to defend our rights and the rights of people all over this world, and yet they're brought home and told, you can't protect yourself here. It's insanity. It's absolutely insane. <clears throat> now look, I'm not a one-issue voter, and I know there are a lot of people but on both sides, on both tickets, that are one-issue voters. But if you're gonna pick one issue on which to decide who to vote for, I'm telling you folks, the Second Amendment is an excellent bellwether issue. You find out, I don't care if they're running for sheriff, state legislature, or state assembly, you call it here, uh, president, I don't care who it is. I don't care if they're running for dog catcher. You find out how they view the Second Amendment and how it affects each one of you. Because here's why. There tends to be two different views. There'll be that person that, that views you as, um, if, if, if they don't feel real strongly about the Second Amendment, you will find that they view you as a subject. They view you as someone to be lorded over. They view you as a subject, not a constituent. If they believe in your Second Amendment rights, Oh, by the way, I, now look, I don't live here, but I would like to be able to make it without being harassed to the airport tomorrow morning. But it sure sounds like the sheriff you've got right now doesn't believe in your Second Amendment rights. And it sure as heck sounds like she thinks that you're somebody to be lorded over. She sounds like a bureaucrat that thinks she can decide over life and death issues, maybe indirectly, but it's still deciding over your life. She's making those decisions right now. Now, somebody who believes in your Second Amendment rights views you as a constituent. They view you as someone to be, that they will be serving, that you are free men and free women. And that's why you've got to have somebody like Bill Hunt in office.
I noticed, Bill, on your website, you had a quote, and I didn't write it down exactly, but I bet you most of you have seen it. It's something to the effect that he believes that a sheriff's office should be there to protect your rights, not infringe on them. What a concept. <laughs> what a concept. Do y'all know the difference? I'm sure some of you here do. Y'all know the difference between a may issue state and a shall issue yes. state? Okay, most of you do, but I see you, uh, that a few of you do not. Let me explain it to those folks. Texas is a shall issue state. What that means is if you apply and you fit all the mold for a concealed carry permit, and by the way, I hate permits. Okay, permit means I gotta ask somebody for permission, and it really ticks me off. I shouldn't have to ask for permission when I have the right, but I'm also pragmatic, and any place we can move the bar, we need to move the bar. Getting beyond that, Texas and most other states in this country are, a sh are shall issue states. If you, do, if, you, if you jump through the hoops, you get a permit. California, on the other hand, is a May issue state. And what that means is that in the case of California, the sheriff gets to decide those life and death issues. That is shocking to me. You realize that there are a lot of people on the other side of this issue that view you folks right here as being radical. I, I love these words. They use them against you all the time. Radical, <laughs> extremist, yeah. discriminatory, <laughs> racist sometimes. Well, let me tell you something, and you need to practice these words. When you're in front of the media, because I, I imagine most of you have an opportunity once in a while to get in front of a camera or talk to a radio show or whatever. It's the other side that is radical, extremist, discriminatory at best and racist at worst. And let me tell you why. Radical, they're talking about taking 200 years of tradition and flushing it down the toilet. That sounds fairly radical and extremist to me. All right, I know, you, you made a heck of a speech, man. I am, I'm ready to, I'm ready to come vote for you. The sheriff, the sheriff is the last constitutional line of defense. Y'all remember the Katrina fiasco? Mm -hmm. Do y'all realize what those guys were doing down there? Mm -hmm. They were going in after, after this terrible hurricane hits. You know, right, right next door to us, we got a whole lot of those people that moved into, moved into Texas. Right after this hurricane hits, I mean, I mean, there was looting, there were rapes, there were murders, it was, it was horrible. It was, in fact, they actually had turned loose a lot of genuine, already died in the world, convicted criminals. They turned these guys loose to keep them from dying. They turned them loose on the population. And then what happened? The sheriff turned his deputies loose and said, you don't allow anybody to keep a gun in their hand. So they were going in throwing little old ladies up against the wall who had a gun and didn't want to give it up just because they were trying to protect not just their belongings, but their lives, their very lives. And who was between them and the sheriff? Nobody. Nobody. That sheriff was the last line of defense in that county, and he failed those people miserably. Now, Bill Hunt said something earlier. He said, this isn't a fundraiser. The heck, it's not. This is a fundraiser. Because I'm telling you, I've run a lot of campaigns, and it's all about money. OK, maybe it's not all about money. It's a lot about money. And, and I know he doesn't have any bumper stickers yet, but let me tell you something, folks. And I don't know if you know this, but a bumper sticker is worth, do you know how many votes a bumper sticker is worth? Anybody? A bumper sticker is worth 10 votes. Did you know that? So even you folks who can't give in, 50, 100, 200, 300 thousand dollars, whatever you want to give it. Even you folks who can't do that, you need to pick up those bumper stickers that somebody else will pay for and put them on your cars, you put them on your vehicles because every time somebody sees one of those, they, they claim each and every bumper sticker is worth 10 votes. These are the guys that we must have in office. These are the last line of defense between us and not only who you have in the legislature here, but between us <coughs> and who's in the federal government. This is your man. You need to work for him as hard as you can. I appreciate the heck out of you folks having me here. It is always, <laughs> it's always really good to be in a room of like-minded individuals. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I love preaching to the choir, but I hope there's a few people in this room that were maybe a little squeamish, and I, I, I hope that you kind of rethink things. And I will tell you this, if I had it all to do over again, 
I'd much rather be sitting in jail with a felony offense on my head and have my parents alive to know their grandchildren. So thank you all very much.